My name is Becky and I have anxiety. It's actually a pretty big step for me. I think I've always had anxious tendencies, but it wasn't until I had a baby and had postpartum stuff and all the crazy changes in my body and then just parenthood where I'm like, okay, there is no point in even trying to be in denial about this anymore. A lot of days I feel very trapped in my home. I'm a full-time stay-at-home mom. As of a couple years ago, I think that really ramped it up too, being home 24 seven. Just generally feeling overwhelmed by the amount of loads of laundry and loads of dishes and by how much I'm needed by my three kids. I would also say some days I just kind of feel frozen like, where do I go next? Anxiety also is a thief and has stolen a lot of moments from me and a lot of days from me. Now, I am on an anti-anxiety and recently, as of about three weeks ago, I started going to counseling per my doctor's recommendation that if I am on an anti-anxiety, that I should have holistic mental care and go to a counselor. That way I'm not just treating the symptoms, I'm kind of going after the heart of the issue and also to get some more coping tools in my arsenal. The more I have faced my anxiety head on, just calling it what it is, which has taken me a while, the more I've just kind of owned it gotten some help. Um, not to say that everybody needs to be on a happy pill. Like it's helped me a lot. And so I want to be like Oprah and be like, here's Zola for you and Zola for you. Of course, like that's what I want to do because it's helped me. I don't think that that's everybody's solution, but the more I have faced it head on to say, hey, this is a problem. I need help. It sucks needing help. It's annoying needing help, but I need help. For me, help looks like taking some Zoloft, going to counseling, which also was so, so hard to hear that I needed to go to counseling. But wow, it's like, oh my goodness, wonderful. To go by myself in the car, no children that need a snack, and sit down and have this delightful human listen to me and help me and empower me with coping mechanisms for my anxiety. So I'm setting myself up for success when those moments come and they creep in and I can bust out these tools that she's helped me with. And so with her permission, I wanna share them with you. She is a licensed clinical social worker with a bachelor's and master's in social work. First tip, protected time. She said, nobody can be on 24 seven. You're gonna snap. Everybody needs a protected time. And even if that protected time looks like 10 minutes where you just go for a walk by yourself, take a drive where you Go work out, but that's your protected time and you have it every day. It's best during that time to avoid social media, if at all possible, screens, phones, things like that, because those heighten anxiety. Second tip, mindfulness. Mindful of being in the moment. And it sounds kind of like, ooh, but it's actually pretty dang cool. You walk through the five senses. For example, right now, what's one thing that I see? I see my kitchen cabinet. What's one thing that I hear? I hear the cars driving by on the highway. Kind of sounds like a lullaby going by. Oh, I also hear, I think it's a bullfrog. What's one thing I feel? I feel the arm of my chair. What's one thing I can taste? Unfortunately, my bad breath. <laughs> What's one thing I can smell? I can smell just a slight bit of this magical lavender stuff I spray on my countertop. What it does is it just slows your mind down and you're being mindful of the moment that you're in. She said that's another way that you can get good sleep. If you're having a hard time sleeping, you just go through the five senses. She said something else that I thought was really helpful, which was it gives you permission to stop thinking. For me, that's really, really hard. My mind is kind of like, bah, 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 bah. ah, squirrel, oh, I'm happy. Oh, I want to do this. Oh, I'm multitasking. Oh, I want to laminate something. Oh, I need to empty the dishwasher. Oh, Somebody crapped himself, I need to change a diaper. Oh, uh, shoot, I need to think of dinner. Oh, uh, I'm dehydrated. So the permission to not think is kind of amazing. Third tip, breathing. People highly underestimate how important breathing is. Breathe in through your nose until you can feel it in your stomach. And then you breathe out of your mouth for way longer. She 
said if you're going to do it three times in a row, even better. And with mindfulness and with breathing, they go really well hand in hand. And she said those are things that are not great like in the heat of the moment. Mindfulness and breathing are more things you want to do proactively as you're wiping down a countertop, as you're folding some laundry. Let's say you've had your protected time. You're in your car, you just got back. She recommended that I would just sit in there and do some breathing, do some mindfulness before I come in. So some of that is like filling up your tank with these steps so that when you open the door and you're bombarded with questions or needs, you're in a better place. It also puts you in a better place to really focus, whether you're going to work or you're doing some task. When you've done these things, it helps you be in a better place to be more efficient and effective as well. Just stretching, yoga, downward dog, all the things. You know, I'm not really super into stretching, but I know it does feel really good to do that cat one. She mentioned like just, just a lot of, even just the head ones of just the head rolls. So another thing she mentioned was not being excessive with caffeine. Caffeine is going to give an anxious person more anxiety. So try to have a reasonable amount of caffeine every day. Same with social media, have a reasonable amount of social media. One thing I've done that's been really helpful, and I don't do it every night, but I would say probably 75% of the time is leave my phone in the kitchen at night. That way when I go to bed, I'm more likely to read a book, which is more likely to allow me to release the melatonin, the things that make me actually sleepy. Just a little bit of restricting myself has been so freeing because I honestly don't really have much self-control with it. Like it's very hard for me to put my phone down and I don't like that feeling of something having that much power over me, but it is very addicting, just screen time. Maybe try it, man. It's been pretty magical for me. Um, the times when I'm faithful to do it. Something that is really effective for combating anxiety is to stop asking what if, even if, is a much more solution-based statement. Even if I lose my temper with my kids, I can use that mistake as a way to show them how to apologize. Even if I'm not nailing it today, tomorrow's a new day. Even if we don't get groceries like I wanted to, we've still got something else we can throw together. Even if I can't do that thing exactly how I want to, there is more than one way to approach a problem. And I love spiritually the implications of the words even if. It makes me think of that famous story in the Bible about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the fiery furnace. And they're standing in front of a king who says, you have to bow down to this statue of me. And if you don't, you have a death sentence. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of the gold that you have set up. Even if our God does not save us, we will not bow down. When you can hold life loosely, and with open hands like that, with the even if, it's very empowering and much more peaceful. 